Hello everyone and welcome back to Ray Zero Space and Kerbal Space Program 2 where I'm going to try to fulfill the JEB level for the Starship OFT challenge. That's fly a Starship replica to orbit and land it propulsively at one of the KSC's four landing pads. However, a comment on a previous video suggested that I should put a hundred Kerbals in uh, as was supposedly originally planned though I never took that seriously. Uh, but that comment was by a uh, viewer named A with uh, accent mark on top that I can't figure out how to pronounce, so we'll just call the person A. And uh, so I have uh, put 100 Kerbals in, so if we, I don't know how to, maybe that'll do it. Come on up, we've got lots of lag putting 100 Kerbals like this. Now they're not actually going to be visible here, it's just the command chairs, if it ever shows up. Okay, so it's actually this one, fairing enabled, off. There we go, 100 command chairs. And so it's uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 8 per side on that one. So that's uh, truss with 16, and there's uh, 6 trusses all together, and then the middle ones have 2 extra. So 16 times 6, 96, and then 2 extra on this, 2 extra on that one, that's 100. And there they are. I don't think people understood the scale of this thing, but it's actually pretty darn huge. And so there they are. All 100 of them. Is this a good idea? Of course not. Of course it's not a good idea. We're trying to do other things. It's probably just going to make things more complicated and laggy and bad. And maybe I'll have to do a second try for this particular challenge. I don't know if I'm, it's going to work or not. Uh, like this with 100 Kerbals on board. But... We'll give it a go, and then maybe I'll have to do a version 2 of this. Uh, but right now, I can tell you that the center mass and center lift of Starship are pretty close to each other. Uh, especially when it's uh, depleted of fuel, or close to being depleted of fuel. And that only works though if we keep the back fins. If we lose the back fins, the center lift is going to be forward of the center of mass. Uh, which will be fine during re uh, fine during landing. That's sort of what we want during landing, but it won't be fine during re-entry. It'll just flip all over the place. So, yeah. Uh, we will see. Let's uh, try it out and see what happens. Okay, well, we brought it out to the pad and we just lost a chine. It's, uh, it's over there. Great. That doesn't make me feel any better. Now, as far as the Kerbal's- oh, we've got some Kerbal's head sticking out right here. I could shift- I mean, could easily shift them in a bit. That's my fault. It, uh, it shouldn't be like that. These can easily be closer together. So that might be causing a problem, I don't know. But there they all are. It's like uh, one of those clone scenes in sci-fi movies, where they've got a whole bunch of people in little tanks. Um, yeah, basically. <laughs> so, we've got all the Kerbal's in. You can see them here, I suppose. Billy, Bobkin, Kerman. That's a very traditional Kerbal name. Uh, somewhere in here must be Jeb and all. They might be at the bottom. Some of them we can't see because the camera that would point at them is actually in the seat in front, I guess. Anyway, uh, with one of the chines off, this is probably going to be aerodynamically imbalanced to a great degree. But let me just throw down a little bit and try to launch it. I've thrust limited the vectors to some extent in the hope that that gives us better results. Our root part is actually at the bottom of the rocket right now for better stability. That might cause other problems later, but we'll see. Ooh, it's paused. Uh oh, something must have broke. Oh, of course, the big fins. Oh, and the top fins. Well, maybe we're aerodynamically balanced then. I don't know. I'll have to do all this with a 5 meter version. 
instead of this gargantuan thing. Well, I guess we're sort of tolerably on track, except no fins. Which we do want for re-entry, but I have no idea how to keep them on this thing, so... With the fairings being what they are. So obviously the Starship Super Heavy launch test happened, and um, I have mixed feelings about it. I'm not uh, wild, crazy SpaceX fan. I mean, I want them to succeed in everything, but I'm not over the top. I'm also not an over the top detractor or anything. I was somewhat disappointed. My my goal, if somebody asked me prior to this, and some people did. What I thought they should be able to do was to get cleanly to stage set, and it wasn't quite cleanly to stage set, so I was disappointed. I wouldn't say it's a complete failure. I wouldn't say it's a wild success either. It's okay, just not really great. It's sort of a mild disappointment, is how I put it. Too many engines got lost, too much damage happened on the ground, and they'll have to rethink a few things, probably. And I know there's a new version of stuff going on, and they're planning changes and all that business. But still, you don't launch such an expensive rocket and risk your ground equipment just to clear the tower. So, I think if getting to stage set cleanly was a reasonable milestone, and it didn't quite do that. I know they down downplayed the expectations by saying they were just trying to clear the tower, but that's not reasonable. The lag produced by having 100 kerbals on board almost certainly makes landing much, much harder. And probably if it doesn't work, I'll have to try it without the kerbals on board. It's obviously a lot more stable without the fins at the top. <laughs> sort of like it more without the fins, but... Okay, reserving about 8% of our fuel there. Well, I've separated. We'll see. Oh, no. Oh, no, don't do that. Oh, right. Um, well, something's right. Uh, uh, we uh, we need to control from there. Uh, oh, no, it doesn't work. I had uh, set the root part to that, but even though we have kerbals inside, it doesn't want to go to it. No. When I double click it, it doesn't seem to control from it. Let me. Can we go to the tracking station and get back to it? I don't know. We've got 100 Kerbals on board. We can't let this be this way. This is complicated. It shows a Kerbal, it shows the Kerbals. Um, let me try and tell it to go prograde, but I can't focus on it at all. Uh, I think we should just abandon this attempt. Having a hundred kerbals is definitely producing way too much lag, I think. I mean, you can fire the engines, and it's pointing prograde, I just don't know where the heck it is. <laughs> I can hear the rumble. There, it's there. It says... Well, prograde pro 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 is fine. Uh, I don't know, it doesn't even look like it's pointing prograde, but, but the lag is too much. So my conclusion with 100 Kerbals is that I could put them on, but I don't think it's going to work. <laughs> and it looks like that got destroyed somehow. So we'll leave the Kerbals off for now. Uh, possibly in another version of KSP, uh, we will be able to put 100 Kerbals in and do the thing. But let's just focus on getting the job done and getting it back to KSC. Okay, so this time we are trying without Kerbals and without the seats at all, so we don't have any of that up front. That might shift the center of mass though, and we'll find out how it does. We'll just launch. I'll put a little bit lower on the thrust here, and go. I don't know whether it's better to have the fins or not. <laughs> For now. 
know, I'm trying to keep them, but I would like all of them if we get any of them. Okay, that's too much thrust. Ah, we lost one of the top ones, that's rare. I really don't want one on one side, but not on the other side. Oh, good. <laughs> oh, good. I think it got one engine. We had too many of those anyway. I'm gonna try and increase its authority limiter in the hope that it'll break off. Maybe if I deploy it? I don't know. What, what can I do to you to get you to go off? Well, we lost some grid fins. Now mind you, I don't blame the game for this. This is a really weird way to place these things on... I mean, they're not attached to the fairings, but they're like on the body and then tweaked out beyond the fairings. So it's just it's just a weird situation. But I just really want that one fin to go now. We lost the chine. I don't want to lose the chines. Oh nuts. I decided to try the 5 meter version of Starship Super Heavy in order to see if we can keep the fins on or whether it's just a hopeless case. And so they are attached directly to a body so it should be simpler than having them pass through a fairing. But of course we can't use the same engine arrangement that we had before. So instead we are using three of the, the Reliant engines as our vacuum engines on top because they are about the right size. I'm not going to pull it apart. And then we're using three thuds as our gimbling engines on the top. And of course the Reliants don't gimbal and the thuds do. Uh, quite a lot in fact. Uh, they have an 8 degree gimbal range. And that's good. Uh, down below you just saw it there. We have 33 thuds. Uh, the outer ones have their gimbal turn off, and of course the center ones do gimbal. We'll see whether I need to tune down that gimbal. I haven't tested this at all yet. And of course the fins might cause problems. They might be a little bit too big. Let me try and tone them down just a little bit. But we're probably more structurally sound, maybe, hopefully. I don't know. We'll find out. Now, for the nose cone, I wanted to use this big nose cone here. This 5.52 tons. And then the cargo bay, which doesn't look quite as good. This cargo nose cone is just one ton. So I'm like, I would just use this cargo nose cone, right? I mean, uh, even if I never intended to open it, that's one ton compared to five tons. And the, they're like the same size almost. It's just that the... This nose cone is pointier. The max temp here, uh, assuming they ever implement that stuff, is 750 Kelvin. And then for this one, it's 750 Kelvin. So that says it's a protective nose cone, but I don't know what it's protecting. Impact tolerance 15 and uh, this one, impact tolerance 15. So there's just no benefit to using this. It's an extra 4.5 tons. So yeah, we've got that look to it. Otherwise, I would have probably wanted a point here. We do have landing legs as well, I decided on that. I haven't fitted the RCS on there. I've temporarily put some RCS propellant tanks on the Super Heavy just to fill out that because we've got the reaction wheel there and it's otherwise indented in. And uh, we actually have the reaction wheel and control core inside the cargo bay here. So we actually have a cargo bay. That's an improvement. I don't think we have seating for 100 Kerbals though, so that's not so good. We probably can't fit 100 Kerbals in this one, uh, unlike the other one. Yeah, well, we'll see. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, we've got the reaction wheel up there and then the controller down here, so... That is how it is. So, let's see how it works. Nope, well, I guess we will time warp to daylight. It's stable for now. We did underfuel the... both stages. We've underfueled both stages. Otherwise, we won't lift off. Even as it is, we're a little bit heavy. We'll see how it goes.
33 thuds, folks. Barely moving up here. It seems much better controlled than the other version, but we're going very, very slow right now. I could theoretically replace maybe the center three engines with Reliance, oh, well, or uh, whatchamacallit, swivels instead. That could give us a little bit more thrust. Uh, I can't fit 10 swivels on the ring of 10. That'll be too tight. It's still an engine mount connected to a decoupler here, but it's just not as big and as draggy a top portion or as heavy a top portion as we had previously. So basically it's the same parts connecting to each other. I didn't even add struts this time, just uh, engine mount and decoupler there. And it's all a matter of the mass and the drag causing problems up there that created the wiggles. Oh, but we do still have to point up prograde here, don't go away. Yeah, I can't afford to deviate too much from prograde, that's for sure. Uh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. No! We should launch a little bit steeper. Well, not a big surprise, the Finns do like to stay on in this situation. Now, well, once again, try and reserve about 8% of our fuel for the Super Heavy. We're looking pretty good, though. Better than I expected with the Thuds. They're not super efficient. Now, we're not carrying any cargo this time. Okay, throttling down. And yeah, that's about 8%. Okay, separation. And ignition. We don't really have a skirt on it because the fairing produced by the, the engine plate doesn't stay there. Now, can this version land on the moon? No, not as uh, as it is right now. We'll need more thrust on the first stage. So this has less surplus delta V to land with as well. So we're going to have to do a little bit more work here. Okay, well that counts as orbit. 673 left right now. Okay, well... I would like to sort of round it out to make the results a little bit more reliable, but I think I'll just save. We only have 30 units of EC. That's surprising. We have a lot on the Super Heavy. Well, I've saved it. We'll just try a number of times to do it. I'm gonna go with a 90 degree angle away from the KSC for the Retro Burn. Obviously our fins do not actuate they're supposed to. The way they're supposed to. But we don't have to rely on them to control yaw because we have the reaction wheel. So there is a benefit to that. Well, I think we need to aim a little bit lower because of our lop lopsided orbit. We're only hitting the atmosphere pretty close to the home continent. Oh, we lost power, it looks like. Huh, it suddenly decided to kill all the power from this. Okay. Yeah, it's uh, taking power now. It didn't used to take power. With only 30 units of power, we can't sustain that for very long. I should have put some tanks in the nose. Having all the fuel in the back is not so good. Okay, well, 
Or it's coming in, but it's gonna force us onto the tail because I can't keep the nose down. So, going tail first now, whether we like it or not. I hardly have any control to do a precise landing. Oh, we're not slowing down super quickly. But that should end soon, because we're getting into the thicker part of the atmosphere. But it is rolling all over the place, and still deviating from retrograde. Again, this is the first time I brought it to this point, so I have no idea what its dynamics are. Really, I think I should only have the fins do pitch, and I don't really need them to do roll or yaw. Despite being completely out of control, not super duper off. <laughs> oh, we don't have any electric charge! Gosh darn it, why did it want to take my electric charge away? It didn't do it before. Oh well. But maybe we'll just increase the fuel in this and decrease the fuel in Super Heavy. It seemed to have a lot there. Well, I can't turn on the engines, so... Okay, revert to VAB and let's fix it up. So first of all, I'm putting an extra battery up front on top of that. And we are also going to have a header tank. Not a big one. Maybe I should make it conical though. And we're gonna put more in the main tank as well. Thrust weight ratio overall doesn't look good. I think I'll put three reliance on the bottom to give us extra thrust in place of the three center... not reliance, I keep saying reliance. The three swivels in place of the center thuds. Even though it's nice having 33 thuds. 33 thuds 33 thuds just works, but... Okay, well, modifications have been made. We'll see how they go. Ignition, or start and ignition. And launch. So we have three swivels in the center now. That's why we have the longish plume there, I guess. So 30 thuds and three swivels. Not ideal, but what can I do? certainly makes it better for it to get off the ground. Okay, turning. Uh, it's deviating, it's deviating. Oh, you just hold prograde. That would be awesome. Okay, yeah, I'll just expend super heavy and see how it goes, since that was, wasn't a requirement of the challenge. We will just use it up. Okay, separation. Yeah, maybe we should keep the engine, the engine plate as part of Super Heavy instead of this, then we can dump it. But then we would keep the fairing, I think. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, though. I guess for sort of symmetry, we should use the swivels here instead of the thuds. I don't know if we need to. Okay, I've sort of rounded my orbit out a little bit, and I'll save here. I'll still try a 90 degree angle. Or about, so I'm just eyeballing it. I think I'll go for a zero altitude this time. Okay, close enough. 1,300 left now. Okay, here we go again. I will... Use Resource Manager to move the fuel up into the nose. Or as much as I can. Well, orbit's coming in. Is it coming in fast enough? Well, just out of curiosity, I'm gonna shift the... We're, we're already maxing out, sort of. And so we don't have enough 
nose nosiness. Enough mass in the nose, so I'm gonna go full on retro here. And I'm gonna try and slow down too. But I think it's too late. Let's say I have about 700 right there. Let's see if I can have a soft splashdown, if you will. I'm just letting it hold the orientation. I'm not trying to do anything with that. Uh, maybe I should. <laughs> Oop, I went up. Well, we're hovering now. Uh, well, we've got enough margin. I guess that will work on land. Yeah, we're even floating here. Boy, it's buoyant. But not the right location. Let's load the save and try again. About 90 degrees. I'm gonna go for negative 20 kilometers on the periapsis this time. I feel like it's better to come in steeply. Okay, 21, we'll say. It's already got an impact point there. Okay, well, we'll try to get the resources in the nose. I didn't increase the nose tank, though. So we'll still tend towards the tail eventually, but probably when we want to anyway, hopefully. And yeah, we might as well go full on to tail control. And let me just start the engine. Engines. We need to go a little bit north. Ah, uh, we're still not quite there. Lower than negative 20 kilometers. Not bad as far as being in line with those, though. With the saved one, it, look, uh, it sort of rocks back and forth like this in a way it didn't previously. No, uh, no, it, it starts oscillating like that, yeah. That's interesting. Let's see... Yeah, it still wants to oscillate. I'm gonna have to do this with SAS off. Ah. Uh, oh, uh, well. I mean, we might have survived, but anyway. Let me redo it. Okay, ignition. And we'll go for negative 30? Maybe? Ah, uh, we might be coming in a little bit too quickly because of the wiggling, because it causes more drag. If we can settle down here, that would actually be better. Well, hopefully these awesome landing legs can do their jobs. Oh no, we lost a fin! Yeah, I extended the landing leg too early and that caused the loss of fin? I don't understand, but... Whoa, 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 more, more, ah, uh, more, ah. Uh. You know, if SAS was around, we wouldn't have this problem. Can it do it now, or is it gonna oscillate? Uh, that's weird. Okay, ah, uh, we bounced, of course. That was just all, all over the place. Plenty of fuel, though. Anyway, let, let's try it again. Okay, ignition again. Well, basically negative 30 there. Let's try that. Yeah, might be a little bit too far north this time. I'll roll a little bit to the south. Roll and yaw. Don't know if that'll help. We hardly get any drag, so probably don't get much lift either. 
If it leans a lot away from retrograde, then we get more drag, and that'd be good. But sometimes it can't lean a lot away from retrograde. Is our approach now? Ah, we are definitely off to one side. Okay, maybe. Well, it's tough to tell. It's swinging a lot. Um, let me try and put more in the top tank. Uh, in in. Uh, come on, keep the things. Is that bad or good? <laughs> Uh, we're too far. Okay, um... Uh, maybe not. Um, maybe not too far. Uh, this way... Okay. I think the landing gear should be fine here. <laughs> I'm trying to eyeball it. Like, that's how you're supposed to do it. Oh, maybe not. This isn't helping. No! Please! Oh gosh. Oh gosh. I'm out. Ah! Not quite. Not quite there. Hmm. Well, close. Close. <laughs> uh, Alright, one more time. Trying to duplicate the situation, but it's not perfect. That's pretty severe. Negative 42 kilometers. We'll try that. Can't tell if I'm too far north or south, or too far along, or need to retrovert more. Even having a few tries at this, it's tough to judge. It's looking okay-ish. Alright. We aim for grass or we aim for pad? I can't turn this enough. Uh, can't do it. Not quite there. I'll try and land it softly, but we're short of Delta V here. Well, that's that. Eek! Once again. <laughs> Ouch. Okay, I've lost count how many times I've tried this, but I think this is going to be the last time for now. And then I'll rework the rocket, maybe you give it some RCS or something, and uh, maybe change the balance somewhat. We've been using the exact same setup and just trying to get it to land over there. But, you know, there's improvements that could be made. So we might as well, after this, make them and then try again. So we'll try this time though. I mean, it's not like we haven't been getting close. So we'll see. And much lower this time. We keep having to retro burn. We'll try that. That's, that's a lot. So over 40 kilometers, negative 40 kilometers. Maybe that's good. Maybe we're too far north. I don't know. Hopefully it'll save us some fuel trying to slow down though. If 
I could figure out exactly what balance SAS would like to have, that would be helpful too. I'm not sure where exactly it wants the center of mass and center of lift. Where it wants me to shift the fuel and when. Of course, we're depleting that fuel part way, and that changes the balance. Well, we are flipping over. This looks okay so far. North-South is an issue. Um, maybe we're too far north. We'll see. Oh, yeah. We're retrograde now. Oh, well, all of its rocking is uh, causing us more drag than I wanted. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah, we're too short. Let me try again. I thought this was going to be the last time, but I'll try one more time. Okay, maybe we'll go with that this time. But it really depends on how much we're rocking back and forth, which is a tough thing to tell. Uh, we need to go south here quite a bit. I don't know, from certain angles it looks okay, from other angles it doesn't, but I think we're going to end up short here. Because of the wiggles there. Well, I just want to land the sucker once, so let me just do that. Of course, this is where the mountains are, so it's not great. Okay, maybe SAS can hold this. Well, it was a slope. Ow. And it's rolling. It's rolling. Oh. Got me. Okay, I keep saying this, but we gotta try this one more time with this version before I make changes. And those changes will have to happen for a subsequent video if I decide to... Like, add RCS or other things, or change the... Uh, control surfaces. Going with 44 this time. We'll try that for now, I guess. Uh, I guess we're sort of in line. should do something. I don't know if we're getting to a pad or not. Time for it tame for this one. I, we might end up short. I don't know. Not quite. Ah! Uh. <laughs> oh, great shock absorbers of doom. Oh, okay, I've had enough. I'll add RCS and do other stuff to it to make it better, but I've had enough of this. Um, yeah, we'll have to do some more refinement on this before it's going to work out right. But we're, we're close, it's just not quite right. So hopefully my experience here can translate, but maybe from a different orbit, it'll be completely different and I won't have the right benchmarks, I don't know. We will find out. But for now, I'll leave it here and say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.